today we're going to go over uh, replacing and servicing your indoor filtration system for your rainwater system. This is our standard setup with a submersible pump inside the cistern, feeding a pressure tank with a pressure switch that this pressure switch controls the on and off of the pump. Now, pressure gauge that will give you a readout on the actual pressure in the system. This is a very useful diagnostic tool when you're working on the system if you ever have any issues that pressure gauge is a great way to figure out what's going on with the system. Then we have a shutoff valve immediately after the pressure tank. You want to make sure there's a shutoff valve after the pressure tank, downstream from the pressure tank, not before the pressure tank. So this is water coming from the cistern and the water is flowing this way. We want to make sure it's after the pressure tank, after that pressure switch. If it's before it and someone shuts it off or forgets to shut off the power to the pump, you can deadhead the pump and damage the pump. So we have a shutoff valve after the pressure tank. Then we have water feeding a two-stage sediment reduction filtration system. The first stage has a our 30 micron outer shell, 5 micron inner core poly uh, melt mold poly filter. It's a 20 inch by 4.5 inch. And then the second stage going this way, the flow going this way, is a 5 micron carbon block filter. This is impregnated with activated carbon, which will neutralize taste and odor in the water, as well as reduce the sediment level to a five micron uh, reduction. Then the, fi the final stage, uh, we have our filter wrench for, the, for changing the filters, and we have a UV sterilization system. This is the Vico E4 unit. Uh, it, it's tied to the ballast, which gives us a readout a readout on how many days the UV lamp has until it needs to be changed again. This is the control panel for the UV system. This will alarm if something happens with the UV lamp, it needs to be switched out, counted on clock goes to zero, etc. And then we have, after the UV, we have another shutoff valve. So to service the system, the first thing we're gonna do is remove power from the UV. You can unplug it right there at the ballast, power that down, allow this to, uh, chance to cool. Next step, we're gonna close the isolation valve after the pressure tank, right here. The third step is we're gonna open a sink or some uh, some plumbing fixture close to this filtration system to drain out any extra pressure in the lines. And we've already done this. We opened up a sink in the adjacent room, drained out all the pressure. And then at that point, we can close the second isolation valve and that will isolate the two filters and the UV system for servicing. In order to change out the filter, we're gonna use the, the filter wrench we're going to turn it to the left to loosen the filter housing, to the right to tighten the filter housing. Now these two filters, these two filters will get switched out every anywhere from four months to 12 months, depending on the quality of the water going into the filters and also uh, how much water is being used. The telltale sign of when to switch out these filters is when you notice a drop in pressure inside the house. If you uh, if you notice a drop in pressure, you're taking a shower and you think, wow, this feels like there, there's just not enough pressure here anymore, that's the time to switch out the filters. That just means that this filter material is, is slowly been getting clogged up and as it gets more and more clogged, it will restrict flow, which will also reduce the pressure in the system. So the, that's the best way to determine when to switch it out. If you want to just keep a routine schedule, then it's best to 
switch these out every six months, and the lamp every year. So you'll, you'll remove the old filter, put the new filter in, and then before you put the filter housing back on this uh, the, the mounting rack, you want to make sure that this O-ring is intact and just do a, a quick inspection to make sure that it doesn't have any dings or cuts or uh, it, it, that it wasn't cinched anywhere. And it doesn't hurt to use a little silicone lubricant to re-lubricate this O-ring and grease it a little bit before replacing it into the, into the housing. When you replace these, if you're doing a six month schedule on the filters, it's a good idea to at the same time uh, service the UV system. And to do that, again, you're gonna, you're gonna wait every year to replace the lamp. Um, but every six months, it's a good idea to, to uh, service the port sleeve of the UV system. And to do that, we're gonna remove the, uh, we're gonna make sure the power is off and it had a chance to cool down. We're gonna remove this, this uh, male, um, or the female uh, electrical plug from the, on top of the UV lamp. We're gonna unthread the lamp from the system. The lamp just lifts up. And by the way, when you're replacing the new lamp, this is the same process. You just pull the old lamp out, put the new lamp in, and thread it on to replace the electrical connection. But if we're servicing the port sleeve, we're gonna remove the lamp and then loosen this gray plastic fitting right here. Now this is what is under pressure. So again, you wanna make sure your, your water is drained out. The water pressure is drained out. And then we pull this sleeve from the UV unit and we can see that we have some calcification. This is a new system uh, installed on a concrete cistern. So the concrete initially will um, etch a little bit and that calcium will get in the water. So it, it produced some hardness on the sleeve. So we just pull this out carefully and wipe it down with some with a clean dry cloth, um, lint free if possible, and you can use some CLR to break up the uh, calcification on the, on the cord sleeve. We want to make sure that this stays clear so that the UV light can penetrate through this sleeve into the water supply to sterilize the bacteria. This sleeve is simply there to encase the lamp so that the lamp doesn't touch water directly. So we would wipe that down with some CLR, make sure that O-ring is intact, push that back in the, in the UV chamber, and then use this gray connector to thread down and hand tighten to create a watertight seal then replace the lamp inside the UV unit. You don't want to touch the lamp. Um, there's, a, there's a plastic piece on the bottom, you can touch that. The plastic piece on top, you can touch that. We're going to insert that lamp carefully back into the cord sleeve, back into the UV chamber. Again, hand tighten it, and then line up the prongs on this so that it will accept this electrical Plug. We'll, we'll push it down until we hear it click into place, and then we'll re-energize the UV system. And then we'll put the filter housing back on, and at that point we'll do a pressure test. You want to slowly crack this valve just part way to make sure that, uh, that there's no leaks. Sometimes this O-ring will slip off a little bit and it'll create a leak. But if you slowly crack that valve after you replace the filter housing, you know, just watch to make sure it doesn't it doesn't start leaking around the filter housing. If it does, we we'll close that, drain off the pressure, and take this filter housing off. Look at the O-ring and replace it. Then the last step after you crack that valve is you'll push these air release uh, uh, valves on the top, these red air release valves. This will just allow air to escape as you're repressurizing the system. And, uh, and at that point, you can open this main valve and open a nearby sink to allow any excess of air to escape in the system. And do one more leak check, and you're good to go. Thanks for watching.